I think just about everyone has those points throughout the week where they really don't feel like cooking. And when you're on a strict diet, that can lead to deviating from the diet, aka cheating. On the carnivore diet, you know, where you have to prepare every meal and there's not too many options, it is nice to think of snacks and have some stuff on reserve. Depending on how strict your carnivore diet is though, that can mean a lot of different things. You know, a raw ribeye steak, or you know, a bunch of raw cracked eggs, some raw dairy products, if you have access to them, are very approachable, nutritious things that technically don't require food prep and can be considered a snack. But not everyone is gonna you know, chow down raw into that ribeye steak. Not everyone is gonna have access to raw kefir, raw yogurt, raw cheese, which are all amazing nutrient-dense foods that are very approachable, that are great snacks. This is more of a you know, conventional, what everyone would have access to, what you can walk into your supermarket and get. Uh, so let's get started and go over what you know, I've kind of summarized as those options. And all I really did was you know, go to Whole Foods and even most local supermarkets will have this. I walked through every single aisle and picked out things that required zero prep, were considered carnivore and fairly nutritious. But again, I want to emphasize, you know, if you're not that strict and you eat a raw diet, you know, you can just have some raw meat. You can go to a local farm and get some raw dairy products. I think, you know, raw milk, raw yogurt and kefir especially are some of the best, most nutritious and affordable snacks you can get. And they honestly beat most of this stuff I'm going to show you guys today. That being said, there's definitely some tasty options. Although, a bit expensive. Of course, we had to pick up some salmon roe, aka caviar, and surprisingly, this is only about 12 bucks. Although it, you know, it is 1.75 ounces of roe. You know, we do have this a lot more affordably on Frankie's Free Range Meat. It was just something I decided to pick up. You know, you can find this at an Asian market for a reasonable price. And you know, for anyone unfamiliar with caviar or fish roe, uh, it's the eggs of the fish, the reproductive organs of the fish. And if you were going to get this from a land animal, you know, we would be talking about the ovaries. And fish roe in general is one of the most nutrient dense foods from a balanced perspective. It has all of the fat soluble vitamins, you know, A, E, D, K. It has the water soluble B vitamins, some, even some vitamin C, incredibly high in omega-3 fatty acids. It's unusual for a food to have such a balanced and complete nutrient profile, and it's also highly satiating. You know, you have a tablespoon or two of this, you won't really want to eat anything else. You know, that being said, you know, the cheaper, more reasonable option to row is our next thing, which is canned fish. But the row is raw, it is salted. Um, if you do want to find like unsalted row, it's going to be difficult. You might be able to get it frozen without salt added. You might be able to, you know, cut open some fish yourself and find some eggs in them. But generally speaking, salmon roe is the most affordable, best tasting option you have here. And even, you know, 1.75 ounce jar, you know, you don't need that much omega-3 every single week. You know, you only have to have it once or twice a month. So just a jar this size every month is enough for your maintenance amount of omega fatty acids. And that being said, not everyone wants to spend, you know, 12 bucks on this. So you can get some canned fish. And this is actually kind of expensive too. I think this was 470 and I've seen these canned mussels go for like six, seven dollars a tin. And and it was funny because I was at Whole Foods yesterday and I had 15 of these in my cart and I convinced myself not to buy all of them. I love how these taste so much, but I couldn't justify spending, you know, $70 on some canned mussels. And, and it doesn't necessarily have to be mussels, but canned shellfish tend to be the most nutrient dense. Oysters, mussels, clams, very high in omega-3, very high in B vitamins. Uh, you can go for the fish, uh, whether it's um, tuna, mackerel, anchovies, but you know, those tend to be slightly lower quality. They don't have as many B vitamins, you know, possibly more pollution concerns, but, but these taste really, really, really good. Like I, I could eat 10 tins of these. So this brand specifically, Bria Dia Rosa, uh, I, I, again, I, as I said, I had 15 of these in my cart. I've really fallen in love with the taste of these. Uh, if you do see these in your, you know, your local supermarket, 
uh, definitely try them out. Uh, as with the salmon roe, it is a nice treat to have, you know, once a week, a couple of times a month. And, you know, I mean, it's not completely carnivore. This is olive oil, vinegar, sweet paprika. Uh, so depending on how strict you are, you know, I just usually pick out the mussels and have them. I don't you know, necessarily consume a lot of the oil, but I definitely give these a try. Uh, very nutrient dense, very high quality, a uh, reasonably affordable option in any market. And, uh, you know, just to you know, be specific, it doesn't have to be this brand. You know, there's plenty of canned mussels, all different types of seafood and fish, but you generally get what you pay for. So, you know, expect to spend four, five, six dollars a can for something good. Uh, still on the topic of fish, that brings us to smoked salmon. And out of everything we've shown here so far, this is probably like the freshest, highest quality version of fish you can get that's non-perishable, that's a snack that, you know, doesn't require any preparation. Uh, this is just salmon with salt, cane sugar, and spices, and they smoke it. Uh, I don't think this is cold smoked, but you, you can also find cold smoked salmon, which is still considered raw. Uh, the main thing you're getting in, you know, the, the canned mussels and the salmon roe it is a higher omega-3 content. You know, this is more protein focused and although you're still getting omega-3s, uh, you know, it is lighter on the fat percentage. So still a very nutrient dense option, still very good. Uh, but this is, uh, I think like 11 or 12 or $13. So all of these options are pretty expensive. You know, nothing here is gonna be cheap. Uh, if you were to buy the raw material and make this yourself, obviously we'd be having a different discussion. You know, if you bought just, you know, fresh wild mussels and made some marinade yourself, uh, we might do a video on that. You know, if you were to, I mean, even make your own caviar or buy caviar in bulk, it's definitely cheaper, but, you know, face value, buying this stuff in the supermarket, it, it does tend to add up. Uh, next up is uh, whey protein. And this is something I haven't really talked about a lot on my channel or mentioned a lot until recently because I never really analyzed the nutrient profile of whey. But since it is the like skimmed off part of milk, it's incredibly high in the protein component, which is B vitamins. And if you guys are wondering, hey Frank, if you're recommending powdered whey protein, why don't you recommend something like powdered collagen protein? It's because collagen is agrochemical, like bovine hide waste, and it's usually never organic. So that's a very low quality processed form of protein. I think whey is a lot better. The technique they use to make whey powder is this like spray drying thing that doesn't really degrade the nutrients too much and it's not heavily processed. Uh, this is grass fed, it's not organic, although I would definitely go for organic. I got the vanilla flavor because you know this one thing was like 20 bucks, which is completely ridiculous. I just bought it for an example here. Uh, you know, you can probably find something that just has whey protein as the ingredient. And the only real downside I can think of to this food, you know, outside of its expense, is the calcium content. If you're really sensitive to calcium, uh, hypercalcemia symptoms, you might get some insomnia after consuming this. Uh, so just bear that in mind, but I, I really can't emphasize how much I like whey protein from a nutrient density, approachability, you know, B vitamin perspective. It's really something that's flown under the radar uh, that is, outside of the context of conventionally raised whey. You know, you want grass fed, you want organic, you want some high quality stuff. And staying on the topic of dairy, we have cheese. So you can get raw cheese in your local supermarket. It's just those other raw dairy products like milk, kefir, yogurt, cream, butter, you have to get from a local farm. Uh, so this is Parmigiano Reggiano, uh, one of the most well-known cheeses. Uh, we do have this on Frankie's Range Meat. Uh, it's about $20 a pound. I think we have it way cheaper on our website. I can't speak positively enough about raw cheese, just like I can't speak positively enough about whey protein. Uh, cheese, though, is a more complete food. Uh, as with the salmon roe, this has a complete nutrient profile. It does lack the preformed omega-3s, but cheese does have an excellent amount of vitamin K2. It's very calorie dense. Uh, like the whey protein, it's incredibly high in calcium. Uh, this has fats. This has some carbohydrates, this has some protein. So it's really balanced and, and cheese is an underrated snack as something that you can eat on its own and not get hungry. With some of the prior things we mentioned, the whey protein, the smoked fish, the canned fish, they tend to be heavily protein based. 
So something like cheese where it has a balance of fats, carbs, and protein satiates your appetite better, has a more balanced nutrient profile. It's arguably something you should eat on its own above the other things. Uh, the salmon roe does have a decent fat content, so it is more balanced in that regard. And something more approachable for your kids, uh, this is organic string cheese. And I mean, it's decent, it, you know, it's a fat and protein option. It's not the most nutrient dense, it's not the highest quality. You know, it doesn't have the best probiotics, beneficial bacteria like the high quality raw cheeses do. And it certainly doesn't have as good of a vitamin K2 content, you know, but I guess it's something you can enjoy here and there. The cheese isn't really too expensive per calorie. I definitely cringed when buying the, the whey protein and the smoked fish. Uh, the canned fish, I didn't really care that much, although I should probably cringe. And of course, caviar is caviar. I mean, really guys, everything here is pretty expensive per calorie with the exception of the raw cheese. Uh, so, you know, beef jerky is, you know, $7 per three ounces. Uh, I don't really think I have to uh, talk about jerky too much. Any muscle meat is mostly B vitamins, but what you want to keep in mind here is even though you're paying, you know, seven, eight dollars for three ounces of jerky, you're not paying for all meat. There's actually like 20 ingredients in here and actually 24 grams of carbohydrates per bag. So a lot of the time, you know, 25, 30% of the jerky is not going to be composed of beef. It's going to be composed of those flavors, those sugars that they add to it. That being said, you know, it's something nice to grab once in a while. Uh, and, and even though we're talking about no prep snacks here, uh, you know, you could make this yourself ahead of time and, and it's definitely way cheaper. The one thing I really didn't want to buy and that I cringed at the most was this. Five ounces of organic roast beef was eight dollars. I was like, what? I'm gonna, I was about to like open up my own roast beef company and just start slicing it in my kitchen and vacuum sealing it and selling it to you guys. If you go to the deli counter, there's no organic deli meats. It's very hard to find organic deli meats in most cases. And this was in like the hanging section, but again, like cringy expensive. I mean, would it be nice to have organic roast beef for lunch? Yeah, but, but not for, you know, you'd have to pay 16, $20 to get a few bites of roast beef. So it, it's absolutely crazy. It's way too expensive. Um, I mean, I think this is way more expensive than prosciutto. You know, I would definitely get, you know, prosciutto di Parma over this. Uh, so, so what we're discussing here is, you know, organic high quality deli meats, uh, great, amazing snacks, good for lunch. Cheese kind of counts here too. If you can get, you know, a high quality cheese sliced up, and it would be nice to live in a world where you can just kind of like go to a deli counter, get some charcuterie, some cheese, some ham, and not have to worry about the quality or without paying out your ass. But that's not the case here. I guess you could kind of consider this cheese. Uh, these are Parm crisps and it's really just aged Parmesan cheese. Very, very expensive. I think this bag is like four bucks and it would actually be cheaper to buy the raw Parmesan yourself and make your own crisps. But you know, not something bad to pick up in a, in a hurry. Uh, 300 calories per bag, it's, it's not too crazy. And they're really tasty, minimal ingredients. Uh, you know, one of my favorite carnivore snacks, to be honest. And something you guys might not have thought of is ghee or any type of fat source. And you could really just consume it by the tablespoon. So what we're trying to do here is satiate our body's cravings for fat, protein, carbohydrates, as well as get some nutrients in. And, and honestly, you know, most people have plenty of vitamin A in their diets. That's not really a concern. Uh, we definitely want to focus on vitamin K2 as well as the B vitamins. And, and one thing I also forgot to mention was uh, honey, which I really like as a uh, snack as well. Uh, honey is good for feeding your gut bacteria and your gut bacteria also produce various nutrients. Uh, so you want to find a balance. And, you know, can you make a diet just out of all of these snacks here today? I mean, yeah, you can, but it, it would be pretty expensive. And I think a lot of people are missing the proper macronutrient ratios on their carnivore diet. And also, you know, even when they are consuming 80% fat, some people might feel a little bit better, you know, incorporating some more carbohydrate based stuff like, you know, like the cheese, like the whey protein powder, you know, and certainly some more omega-3s and more available B vitamins are, are things certain people are missing. So thank you guys for joining me today. 
Let me know how you like this. I should probably throw this stuff in a bag and grab my receipt and then return some stuff at Whole Foods. <laughs> but I'm sure my sister will enjoy this stuff. Uh, you know, I don't really think it, it's too crazy and too out of budget uh, to be buying some of this stuff on occasion, you know, especially considering most people aren't eating out anymore and you know the average amount of money people usually do spend on eating out. Uh, but you know the food's enjoyable, the food's high quality, it's good for you, and uh, you know there, there's definitely times for indulging and enjoying and splurging a little bit, and you know eating more conservatively and and restricting your budget. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, we're going to do a video tomorrow, as well as a live stream, vegan critiques. So I'll see you guys then. Mm -hmm.